Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about irony. In this video we'll cover a few things. First of all, the definition of irony, the different types of irony, dramatic, situational, and verbal. We'll talk about the purpose of irony and how it applies to those three types. And we'll have some examples not only from movies, but also some practice writing examples so you get a chance to see if you can identify irony from a random example. So the definition of irony is an increment or difference between what is expected to happen and what actually happens. There are three main types of irony that we'll discuss. We have dramatic, which is when the audience knows something the character does not. There's situational, when someone expects something to happen and something else happens. And verbal, when a character says something and means the opposite. In all three of these types, there is an incongruity or a difference between what we would normally expect to happen in a situation and what actually unfolds. There are two main purposes for irony. One is that irony can create suspense. A reader's going to wonder what could happen next, and at some points the reader will be concerned for what will happen to the characters. The other purpose is that irony can create humor. We can have unusual situations that we don't expect that will make us laugh, and there can sometimes be a joke, almost like an inside joke, with the audience and some of the characters on screen. So for these irony examples, I'll give you some Pixar and Disney examples since that'll more connect to you. Those written examples will come at the end. I should note that in these instances, these examples, you may see some spoilers for movies you have not seen yet. Well, I've tried to pick older movies at this point, so just be aware of that as you're going through this slideshow. So let's go alphabetically here. Dramatic irony is when the audience knows something the character does not. It gets its name from drama, since plays often have characters that say things on screen or on stage, and then ultimately... We hear it and other characters do not, which means that those characters are left in the dark. This gives us a little bit more information than everybody else, so we expect one thing while the other characters don't, and that creates irony. So let's see some examples. So first of all, we talk about suspense. When we know something that other characters don't, that creates a suspenseful situation because we're expecting something to happen. In Mulan, the fact that we know that Mulan is a woman, and she's in an army with a bunch of men who think she is a man, creates a lot of suspense because we are worried that she might get found out. In Frozen, when Elsa has a power that nobody else knows about, she is constantly on edge, worried that someone will figure out what she can do, and we are also on edge for her as well as a character we support. Now, I know this isn't Pixar or Disney, but any horror movie relies heavily on dramatic irony. The screenshot on the right shows a killer atop a possible victim, and while he doesn't know that person is there, there is the potential that he could get attacked at any point, which creates a little bit of suspense and of some fear for us. We want the characters to do well in all of these examples, but there is always that potential that something could go wrong. And while horror is a great genre to look at dramatic irony, it can also be used for humor. Going back to Milan, when the matchmaker's talking to Milan, and the cricket's in her tea, and she accidentally draws a goatee on her face and is unaware, we're laughing because while there is some suspense there as we wait to see what will happen when she figures out what's going on, and it is a comical scene in the long run, there's also a bit of humor in that suspense because we're not expecting anything horrible to happen, we're just expecting a good laugh when the big reveal happens. Toy Story is another great example when Buzz Lightyear feels that he is not a toy, whereas the other toys know that he is. So throughout the movie, until he figures out that he is actually a toy, there's a lot of humor at his expense. Now situational irony deals with situations. Someone expects something to happen in certain situations and something else happens, often the extreme opposite. We see this often in comedy shows where an unexpected scene, a bizarre scene in fact, can be comical, but it can also create suspense when we're seeing a character in a situation where we expect one thing to happen and instead they have a bad situation in front of them. So for these examples, I went for a little bit of a less is more feel, but often with these movies, the situational irony is created right from the start. In Ratatouille, you have a rat that wants to cook that goes against our expectation for a rat that's usually a scavenger. So that's going to create a lot of humor and suspense. The humor will be watching the rat try to figure out how to cook. There's also the suspense worrying that the rat will sometimes get caught. And for a smaller example in Finding Nemo, the fish are friends, not food mantra, this idea of Bruce the shark approaching two fish. We assume the worst, knowing what we know about sharks and other fish, but instead he's trying to become friends with sharks and stop eating fish, which creates some humor, while there is also suspense there because we don't know if he will, in fact, turn and go against his idea. And last, verbal irony is when a character says something and means the opposite. It should be stated here that verbal irony is not the same as sarcasm, although they are closely linked and often connected. Now, good verbal irony has a double meaning that either makes the audience laugh or worry for the characters. So when we hear a line, we can infer that something else is going on. Otherwise, it's not really a good example of irony. So let's look at some of these examples. For my verbal irony examples, I've gone with some classics here. For the Beauty and the Beast example on the left, 
when Gaston goes to Belle and proposes that she marry him. Her response is, I just don't deserve you. Now, this is actually humorous because it sounds like she's saying that she's just not good enough for him, but in reality, he's not good enough for her, which creates a humorous little misunderstanding at the end of that scene. Now, it can also create suspense. We talked about this with Casca Montiato, if we've already read that story in class, but in The Lion King, when Scar says that the surprise he has is to die for, we know that phrase is a common expression that makes it sound like that this is going to be a great surprise that is worth losing your life over, but what we also know, and this is partly dramatic irony as well, is that Scar has a plan here, and that he is intentionally trying to get Simba in a place where he could, in fact, actually die. So these are double meanings, and they are verbal irony, because what it sounds like the person saying in normal context, we actually know is the opposite. So there's a little bit of dramatic irony in there as well, but it is also primarily verbal irony. Now, as I've alluded to a few times now in this video, it is possible for something to count as more than one type of irony. So sometimes a scene can really show you various forms of irony, which makes the irony more connectable. And the two pictures I have here from the song in Summer and Frozen, there's some situational irony there because we have a snowman in the summer, which we know is bizarre. But it's also dramatic irony because the audience knows that if Olaf gets his wish to go into the summertime, that things won't go well for him. So this creates suspense, but it also creates a little bit of humor watching a snowman frolicking in a field. On the other side of things with Monsters, Inc., the entire movie is situational irony, where normally we expect the little kid to be scared by monsters because the monsters are scary, but in reality the monsters are scared of the little kid. So this creates a lot of humor for us throughout the movie because we are watching this a little bit of a bizarre situation. But it's also going to be dramatic irony because we, as audience members know that the monsters have nothing to worry about. They just think they do. So some humor from that element also. So at this point you've had a pretty good breakdown of what irony is, the types of irony, its purpose, but there's a difference between knowing what irony is and being able to identify it. So what we're going to do here is read some stories. I'm calling them Rory stories for my dog Rory. And you're going to have a choice of dramatic irony, situational irony, and verbal irony. As you read each of these stories, I will pause the video and you can ask yourself what type of irony is present and we'll review after each reading. Here's your first story. The back door opened and Rory dashed into the yard to protect his home. He saw all the evil bunnies look up and flee toward the exits. When the yard was clear, Rory knew he had saved the day with his intimidating presence. Mr. Williams went to pet Rory and rolled his eyes. He said, good thing we have you as a guard dog to keep us safe. Take a moment and try to figure out the irony in that story. So you may have guessed that this is going to be an example of verbal irony. When you look at the situation, Mr. Williams rolls his eyes. He says, good thing we have you as a guard dog to keep us safe. In this instance, Rory didn't actually have to keep us safe from the evil bunnies. This is just Mr. Williams saying something and meaning the opposite of what he actually intends. So this is an example of verbal irony. Let's try a second story. Mr. Williams had forgotten to check the yard for cats, and by the time he remembered, Rory was already bolting for a small kitten. Mr. Williams began to shout and run after Rory, but it turned out he didn't have to bother. To Mr. Williams' bewilderment, the kitten started chasing Rory, hissing at him as Rory ultimately ran up the steps and back inside. And for this example, we have an example of situational irony. Normally in this situation, we would expect the dog to chase the cat. We get the opposite here for a more humorous result, meaning that the kitten is chasing Rory, and this is what we would not expect to happen, so the situation has gone in a bizarre turn. It creates humor for us. Here's your last story. Rory's owners were excited. Today was the day Rory would get to go on a three-mile hike with all his doggy friends. The owners started bustling about the house, getting everything ready for the car ride. On his bed, Rory started to whimper and put his head between his paws. The humans were up to something, and he couldn't help but feel he was going to the vet's office. And by process of elimination, you could have probably figured out this is dramatic irony. And the key here is that the owners and the audience know that they're going to go on a big hike with his doggy friends. But Rory believes he's going to the vet, so his reaction is the opposite. This is humorous to us, or possibly suspenseful if you feel bad for Rory in this situation. But overall, we have an example of irony here that's going to create some suspense for when Rory ultimately figures out where they're going. And along the way, there could be a lot more antics because of the ironic situation. So that's your video here. There were three types of irony discussed and their purpose. 
how they create suspense and humor and allow for readers to engage in a story, make predictions, be prepared for future scenes. Using all this information, you can have a good grasp of irony and it might help you identify it in the future. I'll be placing links in the bottom to help you get to different points in this video in case you ever want to review without watching the whole item. And thanks for watching.